Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Quinn Jacobson, and uh, this is the Studio Q live show. And uh, I hope we have um, a good crowd this morning. It should be interesting and uh, actually fun. Um, I try to do these uh, video podcasts once a week now and uh, try to um, enlighten and illuminate a lot of what uh, I've been publishing for the last uh, almost two decades now on the wet plate collodion process. So if you work in wet collodion or you're interested in wet collodion, tin types, ambro types, negatives, prints, um, you might find some of this interesting. Good morning, Samuel. Good, or good afternoon and good morning, Pat. Good to see you guys. Thanks for dropping in. I've got the uh, computer pushed back a little bit from me this morning, so uh, um, uh, forgive me if I'm trying to read the chat and uh, catch up with everybody. Hey, good, good afternoon, Mr. O'Donnell. Good to see you. Hey, no problem. Um, I'm going to talk about that thing yesterday real quick. And good afternoon, Sasha. Good to see you, brother. Good to see you. Absolutely. Um, yesterday, which was Friday, had kind of a snow day here in Denver. So uh, I decided, hey, I'm going to pop on and we'll make up some emulsion for uh, gelatin chloride printing. Because I'd had uh, two or three people ask me about doing gelatin chloride uh, today. And... Um, I, I have a Vimeo account where all my videos are stored for the workshop stuff. And they, they sent me an email and said, hey, you should try this live stream. Uh, we can broadcast out to YouTube and Facebook and all this other stuff. So I jumped on there yesterday and uh, was a complete disaster, actually. I don't know. It's froze up. It stopped somewhere in the middle of me making the emulsion and blah, blah, blah. And since then, um, I've had several people inquire and say, hey, tomorrow would you do collodio chloride emulsion and printing and and say d redo the gelatin chloride? And I said, yeah, you know what? That's a good idea. So today we're going to do make collodio chloride emulsion. I'm going to walk you through that and then we'll make uh, a print, uh, make a pot print from that emulsion. So uh, kind of going out on a limb here just a tiny bit. Um, you should let your emulsion sit for, you know, a few hours or a day or so before you pour paper. But you know what? I've had pretty good luck with it, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and try that today. So we'll uh, we'll push the envelope here a little bit. Hey, good good afternoon, Linda. Um, and Odad, good morning, Odad. Good to see you. Fairy Hill, good morning. Thank you very much. Good afternoon for you guys, actually. Um, it is a beautiful sunny day here in the Denver metro Colorado area. Uh, we're not very warm today. I think we're going to hit 10, 10 degrees Celsius or so, 50 degrees or so Fahrenheit. It did snow yesterday, last couple of days, so we got a lot of white stuff on the ground. But it is beautiful and sunny, and maybe we'll throw our pop print out there and see if we can print out through the window there. We'll see what happens. So again, I apologize that I have this... Um, Computer pushed back. In fact, I might push it back just a little more. Um, and I still can see the chat. So um, Sasha says, I was working on my master uh, photographer exam all day, which is on Tuesday. So this is my break. Excellent. Well, good good luck on that exam. Wonderful. That sounds, uh, sounds like you're uh, d knee deep into it. And Sanford, good morning or good afternoon, good evening, wherever you guys are from. I really appreciate you coming in. And again, when I get going on this uh, this emulsion, I'll try to keep my eye on the chat. But once I get involved in making this emulsion, I'm going to have to kind of concentrate my efforts there. So before we get started making the emulsion, let's go over just a couple of things. Everything that I talk about um, this morning... Uh, this afternoon, this evening, or whenever you're watching it. It could be in the middle of the night. Um, everything you see here, you're going to find, and I'm going to give you a page number here, you're going to find in my book, um, it's called uh, Chemical Pictures. You'll find everything here that I'm doing um, on page, let's see, let me find the page number. I should know it by now, right? I, <laughs> kind of funny that I don't. There's albumin, uh, fixing, blah, blah, blah. 
and let's go to page 150. So everything you're going to see me do right now is going to be pulled from this page 150, and you can follow along with me. Um, I am going to take you in the dark room, and we're going to do the magnetic spinner, uh, magnetic stir. We're going to spin this emulsion up, and then we're going to let it sit for a little while. And while, while we let it set, I'm going to come back and talk to you about what kind of papers you can use with collodio chloride pot printing. We're going to use some of this today, and if we have time, I'll break out another flavor of paper that we can pour and, and make some prints. So if you don't have my book, go to my website, www.studioq.com. Click on the front page there, and if you can, you'll get a copy. And also, you'll get 42 or so videos um, that uh, go through all this as well, too. So I'm kind of replicating the video just a little bit today. Um, I'm going to show you what negative we're going to print out today as well, too. I just need to, I'm kind of disgusting, I need to clean the back of this off real quick. The glass side of the negative, not the emulsion side. I'm going to just clean this off so we have a nice clean negative. And I'll talk to you about contact printers and all this stuff. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make emulsion. And we're going to try, we're going to do a print of this. Why am I choosing this negative today? Because this is an un, a non redeveloped and quite thin um, wet collodion negative. I don't know if you can see it. If you see it, put it up against my shirt here. Let me turn it around. You'll get a little better view of it from the glass side. Quite a bright ambrotype. Very overexposed, actually. This reads in the des densest, densest part, the maximum density of the D max. Let me make sure of which side I have here. The D max here, right in here where the reflection on the bottle is, that reads at 1.65 on the densitometer. So that gives you an idea of the D-Max in that. Um, I don't think I made a pot print of this yet, but we're going to today. So you guys will be able to see that. Bear with me. I'm flying by the seat of my pants here, so to speak. Uh, this is live, so I'm not going to be able to change anything up. Good morning, Tim. Good to see you, brother. Thanks for joining us. Um, I hope you guys, I know I got some email, a couple emails from people um, requesting this collodio chloride um, emulsion and printing out session. This is going to, def we're definitely going to go for an, at least an hour, probably an hour and a half. And that's if I quit jabbering and get right on with the business here. So um, this is going to be a little bit complicated. Bear with me. Um, I'm going to walk you through the parts of how I make this emulsion. This process real briefly on the history of it this process was invented by Wharton Simpson in 1864 this is probably my favorite printing out process and you're you're, you're gonna see why um, it's uh, a little bit complicated to make uh, the emulsion and the binder is collodion so it's a little more expensive than a gelatin or, or you know salt or you know some of the uh, egg whites albumin some of the other binders so that raises the cost a little bit but i think the bang for the buck you get is just amazing so i hope you find this interesting and um and bear with me if you have questions say hey stop i don't what did what did you say there go over that again so let's get started let's talk about what you need in this um making this emulsion for a pot print the first is collodion plain usp five percent it will not work will not work with anything less than five percent it just won't i went through that misery and uh you need i think uh, mike at artcraft now has on his website pot print collodion so it makes it pretty obvious uh, uv photographics um uh, chem savers um mavidon those are all great here in in the states and overseas i'm i'm not really sure it's it's been a few years since i've been there so i'm not really sure of what we're looking at there but make sure that by weight um you have at least five percent uh, nitrocellulose. You have to have that much cotton in the collodion or your pot prints will fail every time. The next is our all standby Everclear or grain alcohol, like everything else, right? Um, our restrainer is citric acid. I have them down, down below here so I don't have my table all cluttered up so I can work. Our salt 
is strontium chloride. That's our salt that we're going to use. And our plasticizer is glycerin. And of course, we use um, distilled water and our good old Agno 3, our, our silver nitrate. So that's basically what you need in this um, for making this emulsion. You also need a storage vessel. I have it in there by the magnetic stir in my dark room. We're going to go in there when we spin this up and you'll see. And I also have a, a syringe that I'll pull that out so I can squirt that final silver nitrate alcohol and distilled water or dissolved, dissolved in distilled water into the collodion solution to make the emulsion. So let's get started here. Let's start first with dissolving five, uh, one gram of strontium chloride. I've already weighed this out, so I don't have you don't have to sit see me sit here and, and fit, fit, fidget with this stuff. One gram of strontium chloride, and I'm going to take um, about five mils of distilled water here, and I'm going to dissolve that. Use the heat of my hand. Actually, you know the first thing I'm going to do. Um, somebody's going to call me out on this if I don't do this, so I'm going to grab me a, a pair of gloves real quick. So, pair, pair of rubber gloves, just to be safe, right? We always want to be safety first, as we say. So, don a pair of rubber gloves. Get your, uh, get your one gram. I like to use this little 50 mil beaker. That's just one gram of strontium chloride. Uh, whoop, 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 I almost lost it there. <laughs> five grams of distilled water, or five milliliters of distilled water, more or less, somewhere in there. Uh, five, get get as close to five mils as you can. I'm gonna pour that in. I'm gonna use my little glass rod. Maybe I didn't mention that just a second ago. And I'm gonna use the heat of my hand. It's cold today. It's cool today. And I'm gonna just gently. Tap on that, just like you're breaking up cadmium bromide. I'm going to tap on that, and dissolve that out into that distilled water, and it goes fast, just like that. I'll show it to you here. People say, "Oh, you stick your tongue out when you're doing this." I know I have a bad habit, you know, doing that kind of stuff. So, helps me concentrate. <laughs> so. Five mils of distilled water and one gram of strontium chloride. That's our salt. We'll talk about this in, in, as we go through this. This is another test tube. I have my little test tube rack here. I had distilled water in here and, and this in, in as well. This is four mils of glycerin. Glycerin is our uh, plasticizer. Four mils of glycerin and four mils of ethanol, grain alcohol. So eight mils total. Now, I don't like to pour, once you get glycerin on your gloves or in your hands or in your vessels, I don't like to, uh, I don't like to have glycerin in my stuff. So I take the five mils of distilled water with a gram of strontium chloride and I pour it into my little test tube here with the glycerin and the alcohol. So I'm just going to pour this in, just like that, and you can see that kind of get crazy, the glycerin rumbling around in there. Then I'm going to keep, put my thumb over that shake it up and dissolve it just like that that looks good just like that float around a little bit i'll put that back i'm going to get my thumb cleaned off now i don't have glycerin everywhere that, it just makes it easy that's what i call part one mix that together that's part one now part two is really simple you take a bigger beaker we're going to do 250 mils i'm going to go right right there 250 mils of plain USP collodion, and what's the catch here? Five percent or more. Pop this off. Hopefully, it doesn't. No, didn't explode in my face. So, 250 mils of plain USP collodion. Let me just set that down so it's nice and level. And I can see. There we go. Right in there. Looks good. Tap that back up. You know what our collodion is, obviously. That's our binder. So there's 250 mils of plain USP collodion. And take another beaker and give yourself 85 mils of ethanol or Everclear, grain alcohol. 
Now I'm going to mix these two things to get these two uh, components together. So I'll push the alcohol into the collodion. 5% water in that shouldn't disturb it too much. And I'll take my little uh, glass rod and just kind of whip that around. You might see you might see a little cotton pull out of that, but usually not. There's really not enough water there. So that's nice and clear and mixed up. That's part two. So what do we have? We have part one here, strontium chloride, glycerin, alcohol, and we use water to, to dissolve the strontium chloride. And we have part two, collodion and alcohol. So as we, as we mix these, we're going to now mix these together, what does that become? If I add a salt to collodion, what, what does that become? Oh, sorry. You see what I tell you? I didn't. Uh, that becomes salted collodion, by the way. So, Jenny Hall says, possibly a stupid question. Never a stupid question, Jenny. Never. But is there any way to make the 4% collodion? Uh, no, it's by weight. So, you'd actually have to add nitrocellulose. That is not a stupid question. That's a great question. Um, here's the upside. If you buy the 5% plus collodion, you can use that for your ambrotypes and tin types, but you can't go the other way. You know, it's kind of like upgrading software. We'll read the, the new stuff. We'll read the old files. The old, the old software won't read the new files kind of thing. But no, you, you can't do you can't do that. You'd actually have to make nitrocellulose and add that by weight, which is very dangerous to do. Um, Paul, good morning, brother. Good morning. Good to see you. We're going to talk about that paper you asked about this morning, actually. So hang in there. Um, Sasha asks, what have microbiologists and wet platers have in common? They both wash their hands before they go for a pee. <laughs> That's good. That's a good idea. And you always want to wear gloves, uh, you know, and we're not messing with anything too terribly bad here. I don't have any open flames or anything, but it does smell like collodion in my studio. It just smells like that all the time. So, yes, be safe, wear gloves. Pat says, is there a reason for strontium chloride versus calcium uh, chloride or another salt? That's a great question. Um, if you do research on salts and you, you find, uh, Pat Doyle is asking this, if you find, uh, you'll, what you'll find is that in this particular application where we're going to pour this emulsion on burrito paper and you have the solvents in there and you want this beautiful fine finish um, and you want a salt that's actually um, more leaning to the heavier side versus like cadmium, you know, that's that's a metal. Um, you want a stronger, like, let's put it this way. This is a stronger salt and that's what you want in this particular application. I have not tried it with different types of salts. I've always used the strontium and the um, mixed them together, uh, made this uh, salted collodion and then put the salt in. So we're going to have the salted collodion with the strontium, glycerin, our, our plasticizer, and our collodion, we just thinned that out just a, a bit. So, um, so yeah, Pat, stick with strontium. You uh, you use a gram of it, and I think we're going to make around 250, 300, 300 mil, uh, milliliters of uh, of emulsion today, and you'll see how far it goes. So I'm going to take um, part one, part two, and I'm going to slowly add this in. Okay. This has water in it, so don't be afraid if it pulls a little bit of cotton out of your collodion. Don't worry about it. It'll go back into solution. So there it goes all in, and I see, I see a little bit of cotton wanting to form. I'll take my rod, my glass rod, and I'll mix it all up. There's some, there's some cotton. We pulled some cotton out of there. We had enough water in there. This will clear up. Don't worry about it, guys. This is completely normal. So I'll just let that mix that up good. That is our part one and part two, salt and collodion, making our salted collodion, right? That's our salted collodion. Uh, now all we need is a uh, silver uh, restrainer and silver nitrate, and we're, we've got an emulsion, right? And that's very true. So I'll let this sit. This will clear up. See, it's it's clearing out here. It's just it had. You got five percent water in the alcohol, and I used five mils to of uh, distilled water to dissolve that that salt, that strontium chloride. 
couple little pieces still in there they'll dissolve out no problem I'm gonna set that over there to the side our salted collodion wipe our uh, little I'm gonna put these test tubes upside down now because I am actually finished with those I think I'm finished with those um, so part what is part three part three and I'm gonna take a little distilled water and clear this out of here just I'm gonna clean my little 50 mil beaker out part three is our restrainer we're going to use uh, 1.8 grams of citric acid. Remember in the beginning I showed you our restrainer, our citric acid. And I'm going to use just a tiny, tiny bit of distilled water to dissolve that citric acid. Now you can use alcohol if you want, but I'm just going to take a tiny little bit of distilled water like that. Just a tiny little bit. And I'm going to take 1.8 grams of citric acid. This is our restrainer. And after it's dissolved, I'm going to add two mils of alcohol to this. <clears throat> and you could you could try it with just with the alcohol, but uh, I'll put my little beaker. Uh, these are the scales I use. I like the Ohas, 200 gram. Bigger if you're going to make large quantities, but I put my little... Let's see if I can do this. I put my little... Uh, my little beaker on the scale, I, I turn it on and let it, it'll just zero, right? We just have zero there now. And now I just take uh, 1.8 grams of citric acid. I don't know if you guys can see that, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 1.3, pretty close. This is the only thing I didn't do because uh, 1.5, because um, I needed to add it, 1.7. 1.8 right on the money and if you can't see that you have to trust me that says 1.8 so I'm going to turn that around back around I'm going to turn my scale off there turn that back up get my ugly mug back up on the screen and again with the heat of my hand I'm going to try to dissolve that just using the heat of my hand and try to get uh, you can use your glass rod in there um, just make sure you've cleaned the glycerin off. I'm just going to try to dissolve that down. It'll be a little cloudy for a second, but it's okay. Yeah, it's going. Sorry. A little cloudy. I like uh, heat is always good um, normally um, if you're trying to get. Um, compounds dissolved and into solution. This isn't a matter of breaking anything up. There we go. It's a little cloudy, but it's dissolved. Now I'm going to take two mils of grain alcohol and I'm just going to... I usually I have a little pipette that I could use, but uh, maybe I will here. Let me use my little pipette. I pour a little, I can't get into the big bottle, so I'm going to pour a little bit out into my test tube here, and then let me show you these pipettes that I use. I like them. I like them a lot, actually. Um, they, they work, they're disposable, they're cheap, um, and totally reusable if you dedicate them. So those are three mil pipettes, so I'm going to go up to two mils right here. So this makes it really easy for me to go down in there and grab two mils. Push that two mils in, and off I go. So there's our, interacting just a little bit with the, you can see our alcohol and our citric acid. That is our restrainer. So that's our part three. Now, I'm going to add that to the, um, oh, and here's our, here's our salted clothing. You see how that cleared all up? No more, no more goop in there. So I'm going to go ahead and add this into our salted collodion. And again, you might get this little bit of reaction. Don't freak out about it. It's perfectly fine. I'm going to stir that up again. Look at that ether in there. Look at that cotton in there. <laughs> it, it dissolves out. It dissolves right back into solution. So I used to freak out about that stuff when I first was doing all this it's like you know you never know what, what did I do wrong ah. 
it'll go back in no worries try to keep your stuff clean by the way too I'm gonna actually just thinking about wiping that alcohol and cit citric acid out of that uh, jug that or my beaker there as I do that I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just wipe this stuff out keep it clean I usually use distilled water a little bit of denatured alcohol to clean stuff out depending on what compounds I have in it a little bit of cotton still floating around there again that will dissolve out but we're getting there so what do we have now guys we have salted collodion with a restrainer in it part one part two and part three now there's a part four and I hope you're not uh, hope you're not totally confused at this point I think I think it's straightforward I know I've done this you know a few times so I get it if you're uh, if you're thinking man you're, you're talking you know crazy here but um, it's not it's don't be intimidated by it wait till you see the results you'll be amazed so the reason I clean my little beaker out is we're gonna make part four in this little beaker and what is part four part four is six grams of, of silver nitrate and seven milliliters of distilled water and and we're going to end up adding 20 mils of alcohol in it and then we're going to go in and um, put it on the magnetic stir and mix it all up so let's start again let me let me turn this and get you over here so you can see it again if, if you like to see that i don't know if it works well enough or not but at least you'll be able to see what i'm doing again i need to see where the seven mils is that I guess I should have put seven mils in before I zeroed but I'll zero out again here so about seven mils of distilled water not much uh, zero the scale and now we're gonna go ahead and put six grams of silver nitrate in there and silver nitrates heavy so be be cautious that you're uh, that's three and a half grams right there I mean it doesn't take much so this is a great this is a great uh, solution. Although the binder is expensive here, um, the silver nitrate consumption is tiny. Yep, there we go. Perfect. Boom. So now I can turn that back around, put you back up here, get my ugly mug back up there, turn my scale off. And now we go back with our clean, clean, uh, rod and I try to I help that silver nitrate out just a little bit if I can just kind of break those crystals down but the heat of my hand will really help dissolve this that's not a whole it's almost one for one so it's not a whole bunch of water that you're uh, you're adding into that so it takes a minute uh, for it to go into solution go dissolve into the water so be patient I'm gonna go ahead and get my 20 mils it's going there kind of see how it's dissolving It's still there but it's it's dissolving and heat helps a lot it's really cold I'm gonna go ahead and take my 20 mils of uh, grain alcohol and this is the final solution I'm gonna take you into the dark in the dark room here in just a second and we're gonna go ahead and spin this emulsion out there's 20 mils of grain alcohol so we have our silver nitrate that I got to get dissolved I'll get my hot hand on there that'll help get it gone so after this we're gonna go into the dark room I'll, I'll take you in first set you up by this magnetic stirrer and then I'll come out and get this because I gotta go through my spin door and I can't I can't do all that carrying all these solutions and the laptop so bear with me just a bit believe me it'll, it'll be worth it um, there's our salted collodion with our restrainer in it. So I'm going to come back out and get that, get the alcohol, and get the uh, the uh, silver nitrate here. It's almost gone. It's almost gone. I'll get that last little bit here. Going, going. You want it all dissolved. You want everything in. You want to do this right by step, step by step, so you don't screw anything up. Almost gone. 
be patient. You know, everybody knows if you work in wet clothing, you have to be patient. So I think everybody here knows that. It's just uh, it's a good reminder that don't get don't get anxious and in a hurry about any of this stuff because you want to screw something up. That's a that's the best way to do it is get in a hurry. All right. We are there. We are there. Alcohol, silver nitrate, salted collodion, and now we're going to go ahead and I'm going to take you into the dark room first. I'm going to unplug you here. Welcome to my lair, if you will. So you're going to go through my spinning door here. Ready? And into my dark room. Welcome to my dark room. My sinks, my stuff. Let's get you set up so you can see this. There's my magnetic stir and my dish. Here's my uh, injection syringe and my storage bottle. That's what I'm going to pour this in. So let me go get the solutions. I'll be right back. Here we go. So we've got the collodion, we've got the um, alcohol and the silver nitrate, and I'm actually going to pour the alcohol into the silver nitrate solution right now. Let me get that warm just for a second here. Get it in my hand just for a second, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pour that into, into there. Beautiful. Love it. So now I should have about 30, about 30 mils or so, well, not quite, but close to it, to inject into this 27 mils or so. Okay, so here we go. Um, magnetic stir, I'm going to pour my, my collodion in and turn my stirrer on. I'm going to start pulling my solution out of here and slowly squirt it in. And you're going to see that solution uh, go kind of go a little bit opaque here. So I'm just going to do it slowly though, right? We don't want to get too in a big hurry. Just a little bit at a time. Let it spin up, spin up. I got this cranked all the way. Can you see it spinning there? I think you can. Yeah, it looks like you can. Whoop. Spinning pretty good. Take your time doing that. I don't usually like to let it spin for a while. A few minutes anyway. Let me go rinse these out real quick. Let's let that spin for a second. Got my beakers cleaned out, back clean. I like to keep everything as clean as possible. I just leave the syringe the way it is. It's, it's fine. Mix it up, good. And then we'll pour it in our jug. You know what? Let's take you back out. You seen this? I'm gonna let this spin for a bit. Let's take you back out and work on the paper. So you've seen how that goes, right? It's uh. I'll just let it spin. I'm going to try to get it get it even there. They used to do this with uh, with uh, 
quill, a feather quill. I, I would hate to do that. I do like the modern electricity and the, uh, the good stuff that we have that way. So anyway, let's get you back up here, plug you in. That's, that's why we don't go into the dark room much on these because it's just really kind of a hassle and it's difficult to get anything out of it. So here we go. Let's talk about paper. And let's prep some paper right here, right now. I'm gonna clean my little area off here. I'm gonna lay some new paper towel down. And what I'll do, I'll lay, lay two sheets down here. No, it does not need to be heated while spinning. Nope, you don't need a heated magnetic stir. Not at all. In fact, you don't want to, you don't want to heat it, actually. Let me go grab uh, a ruler here. <clears throat> There's only so much stuff I can fit on my desk, so so I'm going to take out. I'll do one sheet here. I'm going to take out a sheet of this Canson Infinity Burrita paper. Why Burrita paper? Because uh, you're pouring solvents onto this paper. There's an upside to it, so make sure you do the emulsion side or the print side. This is digital inkjet paper. I think Paul was asking about that earlier. It is indeed digital inkjet paper. So let's uh, let me put that negative there. So let's do this. I'm going to let me go in and, and grab that and I'm going to pour it in the jug real quick. So, I was just in there thinking, as I poured it in the jug, what's the risk I'm running by making emulsion right now in front of you, live, spinning it on a magnetic stir for five minutes, and then going back in another five minutes and pouring a piece of paper? What's the, what's the danger of that, do you think? Or what could I, could I have egg on my face doing this for sure? Because... I'm spinning that on a magnetic stirrer and I'm pulling in all kinds of air and I'm creating all these little micro bubbles. So there's a danger that this may not work or a possibility that this may not work, but we're going to do it anyway. And if it doesn't work, guess what? We'll come back tomorrow or next week and we'll, we'll use the emulsion. It'll be fine. But um, I, th I think we'll be okay. Um, I was in there. It took me a minute because uh, I poured the cloth, I turned the magnetic stirrer off, poured the cloth in. I didn't want my little spinner to go down into my bottle, obviously. So it takes me a minute and I have to do that precisely. And then I want to clean my beaker out. I don't want that cloth to dry in there. So I take it over to the sink and I fill it with water and that cotton will just appear up and you can just peel that all out in one gob and throw it away and then clean it off. So that's what I was doing. So let's, uh, let's cross our fingers and hope we have some good emulsion that I just made there. And uh, we have a piece of Burrita Canson Infinity. This is the uh, 
310 gram a square meter eight and a half by 11 you can get it uh, get it anywhere uh, most burrito paper will work not all burrito paper will work I know that for a fact because I've tried that I've tried several of them but with the emulsion side up take a look at what I do here I'm going to take a ruler this is the emulsion side I'm going to take a ruler about four or five mils and I'm going to make a little uh, area I'm going to bend this up make a little ridge so I can use it as a you know like a boat so it'll hold the collodion while I pour the collodion in on the paper in the in the area that I want to print on so I make them quite extreme actually I don't I don't do them huge I mean I guess I could because we're just gonna print a we're gonna print this negative here so it'll we'll print like that right so I could make them a lot bigger but it's okay I'm used to doing it this way it's not not a big deal do this side pull it up pull it up and while our paper is drying in there it'll only take a couple minutes to dry which is another really beautiful thing um, we'll come out and talk about contact printers so I, I bend them up and then I flatten them out so I can bend the ends up too I try not to mar up the emulsion too much. I mean, it can affect your image. I know not down here, but if you're doing a full print image, it could affect that. So I fold these back over just so I have, I don't want to catch any and I don't want to let it leak out, right? So, or run out, leak out, run out, whatever. And go over here, come up, just like that, bend it over. And now I've got this nice little, uh, I'm going to use this corner, or this other corner. That's what I normally do. I just shape them up like that so they bend over. And then I'm going to use this corner as the drain corner, just like that. So that corner is going to be my drain corner. So I'm going to go in there, and you'll see me. I'll put it on a piece of glass um, um, with a little piece of tape on it. Make sure it's clean. And so it'll hold it. I'll pour the emulsion in the middle. I'll run it to the edges. I'll let it drain, let it drip, and then we'll hang it up and we'll come back out here and talk about um, these contact printers. Let's go in there and do that. I can definitely take you back in there. We can put the white light on so you can see a little bit better. Sorry about all this running around. Um, I think it was Pat that, that, that suggested I get one of those remote webcam webcams. I think that's a good idea probably do that so we're still dark here in the red but I'll go ahead and go white so that'll help a little bit right and there's our clothing chloride we just made um, let me turn this red light off that might help too not super gr great light in here for this but it'll work this is my pore side over here so see where you're at when we look at it this way maybe put you on a, on a fishing vessel here or a fish tackle box so here's my little um, board that I have a little piece of glass I hang the the paper over like that you can see uh, I'll try to do it here if I can let's see if I raise it up just a little bit yeah, I'll be able to drain it off. So check this out. I know this hasn't set very long, so bear with me. If we have a if we have a failure, it's uh, we know why. But we're gonna we're gonna try it. We don't care. We're gonna try it. So here we go. I'll try to keep it in view. <sighs> Make sure it's clean. And here we go. Pour enough emulsion out there. To get it covered around the paper just like pouring a plate my little technique that I use pouring a plate right and it'll come back down and drain it right back into the bottle just like that beautiful boy that ether is going off that thing like crazy and what I like to do I like to drip, let it drip until it kind of snots up a little bit I call it snot like running out of your nose here it'll it'll stop and just hang here in just a second it'll once it starts to dry up. And I can move that bottle away. 
There it is. It's getting close. It's getting close. I'm going to cap my bottle up. There's a lot of uh, emulsion on there. I can pull it off the, the little pour, pour pad now. And I'm going to rotate it around. You're going to see, see that how it's, see that little string there? You see that little stringy there? That's snotted up. So now we have it. I'm going to unfold these edges and let's go over and hang it in the opposite direction on our little board here. Where can I set you down? Can I set you down over here? I think so. Yeah, you can see it from there. I'm going to turn my fan on too. Looks good. So we don't want to stay in white too awfully long. We'll hang it up here. Straighten my corners out. We'll hang it up here. We'll turn the fan on. We'll go red again. There we go. So now we have the paper hanging. Looks good. The emulsion looks great on that. Um, I'm fairly confident that we'll we'll have a decent print. So I got the fan going here. Let's let that run for a, a few minutes, a couple minutes, and um, let's come out and talk about contact printers. So the next thing you need to do is get your negative ready and get, let me go grab them. Again, my desk is only so large. <coughs> I have several of these. Um, I like these eight by 10 um, contact printers. You can, man, if you can find them, get them because they are going away. Um, I know people make them but I like these original ones a lot. I, I really, I really like them a lot. Let me show you what I do. When I'm getting ready to make a contact print, I always make sure that my glass is clean. I, I, I like, I like my stuff clean. And I like to let it breathe after I clean it off with a, a, a Windex or a glass cleaner. I know I should use my calcium carbonate, huh? For, original glass cleaning stuff that's the best and it doesn't off gas or anything but I like to make sure my contact glass is clean I said wow look at that some silver nitrate drift or something on there maybe glycerin or uh, gelatin wow okay I'm glad I did that that would have definitely had a left a spot there Flip it over and do the other side, just so it's nice and clean. There's some gunk on this side too. Sorry if I'm shaking your camera here, but that looks good. So now I just kind of let it sit, let that uh, Windex kind of blow away and uh, I always make sure the edges are, are not sharp, right? You don't want to be cutting your fingers up doing this. There's that. Our little printing frame. And I'll show you how I load my, my negative up. So this is the emulsion side. That's the glass side. And how can you tell? It's, it's, you have to look a little bit. Um, but you always want to do emulsion to emulsion. So your emulsion side is going to go to your paper, the emulsion side of the paper. So, um, sorry. Um, okay, yeah, let's answer some questions here. Hence, no heating while mixing. Nope, no heating. Um, yes. There, you, exactly right, Pat. Pat writes, if I'm not mistaken, mixing the silver nitrate into the solution of the chlor strontium chloride, in this case, right, is going to make create silver chloride. Absolutely. You're going to make a light-sensitive emulsion, just like when you uh, put your two salts in your collodion and then dip it down in the bath. That exchange, you're going to create AGI, silver iodide, and silver bromide. Exactly right. You're creating silver chloride here. Um, uh, the Na yes the sil uh, yes the will convert to metallic silver either by light exposure or by heat uh, mostly uh, light right that but but there is an element you can you, you, temperature will will raise the increase the grain size of the silver exactly but yes by light 
Hence, no heating while mixing. That's correct. You don't want to heat while you're mixing. No, you are absolutely correct, Pat. Good, good call. I, I like that uh, that feedback that way and, and sharing that with the group. It, it's safe to pour the emulsion in low light. It is. It may have looked quite bright in there, but actually there's 40 watt, 220, I think they're 20 watt bulbs. Maybe they're 40 watt bulbs. There might be 80 watts of light I can look and see, but yes. You can pour the emulsion so you can see it. Did you see, you probably, it's so white in the beginning, it's difficult to see. It looks like you're pouring milk on the, on, the, on the white paper. So it's really important to see that you cover all the areas and that you get all that stuff. So you need some white light. And to be honest with you, a lot of these variants in printing out don't become sensitive until they're dry. Um, uh, potassium dichromate, um, those those kinds of salts, those don't really become light sensitive until they're they're dry. And on top of that, it takes so much light, as we well know. I'll probably try to print it out over here a little bit. And this, uh, when I point over here, what I mean is that uh, big, beautiful window over there, a uh, bunch of sunlight pouring through it. So it doesn't uh, it doesn't really respond to that 3300 3, degree Kelvin temperature light of those bulbs. Those are incandescent bulbs. Um, and they're so low anyway, but it doesn't even have a good light spectrum to, to, to print out from. So you can, you, Paul, you can pour them in low light. Um, the old guys used to use candles. I don't recommend that because um, uh, obviously we're using uh, collodion. High, and these are highly, uh, highly flammable and highly explosive. So let's, let's answer any questions as the paper dries. It's, it's, it's probably pretty much, it's probably almost dry. But I like to kind of let it breathe off for just a minute or two. I hate, I've, I've got anxious and I've, I've laid negatives down and, and had them stick and pull the emulsion and varnish off. It just, it sucks. So if you have any questions, shoot, because I got, I got the chat up now and I can see it. And I can see it well. So um, I'll take you back in the dark room when we load the paper as well, too. I, I trim the paper off. Um, usually I have a chopper. My, both my choppers are out here. I might take a chopper in. Maybe not. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so yeah, any questions, shoot them out to me right now. And we'll, we got a minute or two to answer these. So <clears throat> actually, you know what? Ans ask the questions. I'm going to take the negative, the contact printer, and a paper chopper into the dark room. Think about your questions. I'll be back in two sec two minutes here, or less than two minutes, and we'll Keep going. I gotta grab this chopper though. I don't know why I have this out, but this is my little uh my guillotine chopper. So throw your questions out there, guys. I'll be right back out. All right. Ha ah, Did you hear that? Yes. Okay. Good. Great questions. Do you? Let's start with Pat here. Do you ever see any issues having the glass negative pressed against the glass uh, Newton rings? No. Um, make sure you have good. You know, you can spend a lot of money on glass, right? There's a company called AGM. I think they make Clear Vision, which is a low iron glass. Um, you don't have to go that extreme, but. But good, clean, not that tinted glaze, green stuff. Don't don't use any of that. A lot of times people buy glass in, in hardware stores and they end up getting this um, highly UV protected. I mean, if you got clear vision glass on everything, you, your UV penetration would be tremendous. But no, 
it, it, buy the good, clear, clear as you can get glass. In fact, if you can find old pieces of glass, they're never UV protected, right? A lot of this window pane glass is UV protected. I can't even print through that window over there because I have to open them up to let the UV in because they're so UV protected. But that's a good question. Um, the problems that I have had um, are getting too anxious and laying a negative on a, on a wet piece or a damp piece of paper and uh, having the, the emulsion and varnish pull off. So, so that's a great question though, Pat. Uh, DLAX TVV, what type of paper can or should you use for albumin salt or cotton sketch paper from the art store? Yes. So um, what I recommend for um, salt paper is a heavier, like an arches, um, um, acid-free paper, of course. <clears throat> Most anything will work. It depends on how much penetration you want to ha have. Um, the Strathmore works quite well for salt, but the crowbar is for albumin. It's thin. I have a bunch of crowbar paper here. Um, it's thin. It's it's very very close. In fact, almost identical to what they used in the 19th century. The problem with it is it's super wrinkly, and if you don't have a heat press and you, you can't flatten that stuff out, albumin prints can be very uh, problematic that way. Wait until you see this uh, clodio chloride print. Uh, and then Paul asks, can you use a hair dryer on the on low heat to speed up drying a bit? Yes, you can. Don't get it too close, but or have some warmth blowing around, especially if you're working in the cold. You can definitely speed that up just a little bit. You don't want to get it. When I say too hot, I'm at 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 23 degrees Celsius is kind of the max. So pull that away, go on low heat, and maybe just have it hanging and kind of hit it. But that's a that's a great question there. You guys ready to go in the dark room and see this? I think you are. Let's do it. Uh, you won't believe this paper. It is just it's amazing stuff. It's like uh, Kodak themselves made it, um, or Ilford, or somebody. So let me let me go over and grab it here. It's hanging up. Uh, whoop. <laughs> it's hanging. Where are we? It's hanging up right there. I'll go over and grab it. Here's our uh, guillotine chopper, our contact printer, and I'm going to show you how I fashion this stuff. So let me show you the paper first. What has it been? Five, eight minutes, maybe. I don't know, something like that. But there it is. It's like, it's just perfect. It's got kind of a nice, uh, it always reminds me of the uh, Ilford Pearl. Uh, what I like to do, set my negative over there. What I like to do, this is eight and a half by 11. So I like to chop off those folds if I can. I get it as straight as I can. I just like to chop those off. And I like to let it, let it dry first so it's not a mess trying to do this. And I just like it as even as possible. That's why I brought the guillotine in, so it looks decent when we print it. And I just like to go around, have those kind of cleaned up on the ends, edges, and, uh, and it'll fit into my contact printer better anyway. My contact printer is 8 by 10 so let's, let's check it and see. There it is, though. Beautiful paper. Beautiful. Let's just hope it prints. Let's hope we don't have too many bubbles in there. <laughs> So I take the, the guts out of the contact printer, lay it down, lay my paper over the top of that, and it looks like I'm right on the money. I got eight by 10, it's like I've done this before, huh? I feel a bubble, a little bit of a bubble there. Oh, some water there, maybe I'm spitting on the paper. So I lay the paper down, take the negative, and make sure the negative is emulsion to emulsion like that, right? Make sure the negative is emulsion to emulsion. Square your paper up, take your nice clean glass that you just cleaned off, lay that over the top of it, and then hook these in together like this. Flip it over and lock it in place. Now let's go out and print this out. I want This is the fun part. I want to, want to show you um, how this all works. So let's go back out now. I'm going to turn off my fan here. I don't need my fan running. Sorry, back through the dark circle here. There we go. So here we are, back out. Let's try it in the sun. Let's try it because we have such a beautiful, beautiful day today. We have snow, right? But it's still gorgeous. I'm going to put you over here so you can kind of see. So look what we're starting with. That's what we're starting with. And I'm going to go set it out here. 
printing out in the shade. I'm going to set it right here. Out of the, uh, right there. I like used to hang them up back in the day. There we go. So let me show you what I have here. It's hard to do this. I, I need a, a different system for sure. Because I blocked the light. <laughs> Actually, let's do this. We'll speed it up a little bit. Let's go direct into the light. And I'll, I'll show you how fast, uh, how sensitive. You talk about uh, collodion chloride or silver chloride. Watch how fast this, uh, this pops. I'll show you the image here in just a second. Uh, can you guys see me? I think you can. Yeah, I think you can see me. Sorry for all the bumping around and all that, but... Printing out in the shade 20, 30 minutes would be perfect. Just it's gorgeous. But you know, this is a demo. We're we're trying some some things here. So that's what, 30, 40 seconds. We'll go a minute, minute and a half, and we'll take a look at it. I don't have a timer on it. I just do it by uh, sight. I most like most everything in this process, I just do by sight. Is the shade, yes, Tim, the shade is much better than direct UV light. No doubt. You'll get better tonal range. You'll get better, you'll just get better results all the way around for sure. So that was about a minute and a half or so. So what I love about these is you break the back open. And without taking anything out of registry, there you go. There's your beginning. And we can look at the top portion too, as well. We don't have a, as big as breakaway for this. Well, maybe we really can't, can we? I should have mentioned that I like to orient. Um, I like to put these in a in the position where you can see uh, the most important part of the image. Let's go back over. This is probably going to be like a two or three minute direct. We'll see. Let, let, let's see what this does. Yesterday you mentioned that you have a Ryon. Yes. Yes, I do. I could put this over on the... We'll go look at the Ryonet, Pat. I'll show you that. And so if I don't have a good... If I, it was yesterday, uh, I'd be on the Ryonet because I wouldn't be able to... There's no sun, right? So I wouldn't be able to print out. And on top of it, if this was a serious print, this is something I wanted to keep or work with, I would definitely print it out in the shade, but I'm not going to have you guys hang out for 20 or 30 minutes while this prints out. Uh, the Ryo, I'll show you the Ryonet. It's it's wonderful. In fact, w maybe we can throw it under the Ryonet for a minute or two as well. That's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Let's see. Actually, the, the natural light's better. I got some diffused light over here. So that's what it looks like through the negative. But let's go look at the Ryonet here. <clears throat> the Ryonet is a wonderful piece of equipment. There's another contact printing frame. Um, and I love, it's just a big screen printing unit. And it looks, uh, let's do, let's try it. Uh, let's go down to two minutes here. We'll just do two minutes under the Ryonet. Keep my greasy fingerprints off of there. So that's what it's looking like. Put it under the Ryonet here. And boom. Two minutes under the Ryonet. So this is the Ryonet RXP. Um, you can find them. They're, they're great. Uh, I love it uh, for oil, collodial chloride. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're just terrific. If you do uh, a lot of printing out, you'll definitely want to have uh, something alternate for an alternative in the wintertime because uh, I, and I live in Colorado, so we get like 320 days of sun a year or some outrageous number. So I don't really, I even, I use this a lot. Or if, you know, if it's, it's kind of nice not being, uh, you know, dependent on that if, if, if you can help it. So I'm going to do two minutes on this and then we'll go take a look at it. What are we looking for here? We're looking for uh, bronzing over in the highlights. It's so you actually print quite dark 
Uh, and that's one of the mistakes people make with printing out. They stop too early, they fix it and wash it, tone it. They, they don't have that. Uh, um, we're gonna might have to do the, this other process uh, in another session, but we're gonna at least get it printed out. Or maybe we'll make another print too. So uh, we'll see here. We got 40 seconds left and then we'll pull it. Once this goes off, I'll pull it out of the Rionet. So, um, yes, the Rionet works great for oil prints, uh, for carbon. I love it for uh, things that you want, not only when you don't have the sun, but for consistency. Like if you're going to do several prints of something, uh, the sun's moving in the sky, you know, or we're, you know, it's not really moving. We're moving. <laughs> um, and you're chasing that. You have cloud coverage. So if you had a three minute, five minute, eight minute printout, it might change to 10 or 12. You never quite get it all. So the Ryonet's great for consistency. So two, one, and we're off. So let's take a look at what we have. Go over and sit down and take a look at it. I'll peel it back. Oh yeah, it's looking good. I think we're there. That eggplant color that I get. And it, again, it all just depends on the negative too, right? It just depends on what... Uh, I'm going to peek out first and if I can, I'll just pull the whole thing so you can see the whole entire image. Yeah. Yeah, that got it. So there's a 160 negative uh, printed out on collodion chloride with freshly made emulsion, right? So here's the funny thing. Um, people don't realize, and, and I have to go through this in the wash. I'll go. Let me go through this in the wash. You can take a look at it. I just wanted to show you the emulsion. That's from that right there is from the corner of the print, but you can see that that paper works great. Let me go wash this. I'll be right back. Hold on just a sec. Close this up. It's cold. And a lot of UV pouring in. So I got it in the wash. Let's take you guys back in. We're going to go back in the dark room. Here we go. I don't know where I'm going to put you, but I'll find a place. Let me move my, let me move my silver back. So you see all that, uh, that silver nitrate, that free silver nitrate coming off that paper. You want to wash, and if you can have something kind of uh, clear or black, you can really see this well. Um, I'm going to turn off that red light. It's terrible light in here to view this, these prints, but you want to wash this thing until you have the, uh, all that silver out of the paper. And how do you know when you do? You, uh, your water doesn't change color anymore. A lot of times I'll use a black pan or something clear. I like clear glass. It's, I got I have clear glass plant pans that work well. I'm still getting a little bit lift off of that. A little lift off of that. But you're going to see what I want to show you here is is the uh, change in the density. Let me see. Oh yeah, I, I still have it coming off of here quite a bit. The change in density, especially around those galls, the gall nuts. We'll take it out in a good light. Yeah, we want to we want to wash that some more. That water is cold. Uh, the one thing about the Canson paper, I asked them if they could do anything about it, is they have this anti-curl shit, um, sorry, anti-curl stuff on it that really, really messes me up. Uh, puts this milky film 
and I see a little bit of it coming up now. I'm trying to wash it off. But this anti-curl chemical they put on the paper, I hate it. I'll show you this here in just a second. I wanted to get a little bit of warmth to the water, but might have been pulling too much of that uh, curling compound out of it, or off of it, anti-curling compound. I can twist that around and see. Ah, it's terrible white. You can't see it very well. We'll get it out there. Don't worry. We'll get it out there. Yeah, that's better. I think I've got most of the silver off of this, out of this. I feel pretty good about it. We'll take it out there and take a peek at it. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. So the next step is to fix it, but I want to show it to you before we do that. Um, I feel the back of it's a little slimy. I'm going to squeegee this off real quick. I have a piece of glass and a squeegee over here that I can just kind of quickly clean this stuff off with. Yeah, this stuff is coming off the back big time. Man, I don't like that stuff, but it is what it is. Yeah. It is. It's coming off the back of it. Let's go out and take a look at it. Or should we fix it first? We'll take a look at it first. I'll show it to you in the in the light. <clears throat> Now, because I'm doing this kind of haphazardly, I don't want to break anything or drip water on all my stuff. So, <clears throat> so there's the image. You've got that dark red color to it. You see a little bit of that um, anti-curl crap up at the top. You got to watch that with this paper. It is a problem. Um, now we have we could do a couple of things here. I'm just tamping. I'm going to try to dry it off just a little bit. We could do, uh, there's a couple of ways we could handle this from here. We could tone it right now if we wanted to. Yeah, I can feel that anti-curl crap on the back. It's awful. We could tone it right now, or we could fix it and tone it. It just depends on what uh, people prefer doing. You might have a better idea of it here. Get a, get a little bit of an idea going on. Let's see if I can raise it up a little bit, get a better color. Oh. Yes, okay. Um, let's talk about these questions. Those are great questions. Sticky on the back. So there's another paper I was fortunate to get. Um, uh, the fiber-based uh, Burita. I got the last hundred sheets out of uh, New York years ago. Uh, we'll deal with that in just a minute. I'm going to turn it over. Keep some of the light off of it. Not that it's that sensitive, but keep some of the light off of it. Um, let's answer the questions here, because you guys got some good questions coming in. I appreciate those. I don't want to curl it up. That's starting to curl on me, and I want to fold it up. Let's answer those questions. Uh, so let's let's do this. Can you describe what bronzing over means and what to look for in the highlights? How do you know when to stop printing? Yes, great question, Tim. Um, if you do some research and you read the old literature, bronzing over, and Tim's right, what it means is the highlights um, of what I was looking for when I stopped that uh, print from print printing out. I'm going to turn it to the glass side is I was looking for this area right here to bronze over. That's my that's my one, that's my dense D-max area in the negative where that light hits the bottle there. And when I started seeing it, it will literally take on a metallic, sometimes it's like almost iridescent. Um, 
that silver is retarding, um, pushing back the white. You know, obviously that's your white, white. Um, uh, I'll show it to you on the print in a minute. It's I've got it stacked up now. It's, I'm trying to get it flattened out. Um, but that's your white, white. That's your highlight. And what, what you're looking for is that metallic sheen. Sometimes it's iridescent. It's got a copper color to it. It, it can be a variety of things. What you're going to notice, though, is your print's going to look awfully dark. And it's, oh, my God, I screwed this up. But really, um, it's where you want to go. Because when you wash the free silver from the paper or from the print, and then especially when you uh, fix it and, and tone it, but fix it, you're going you're gonna to pull all of that um, unexposed silver off. It's still, it, it, it can lay there. And all the stuff that needs to come out and leave all the exposed silver and then tone it should bring the contrast back into it. So you go through these iterations and then another step is when it's dried, you're gonna gain some density when it's dry, dried. So if you go to where it looked good visually, like, oh, that's a beautiful print, and you go fix it, tone it, fix it, wash it and dry it, you might be disappointed. You might be a half a stop, a stop, a stop and a half um, under exposed. So you go until you bronzed over those highlights. And that's a great question. Hello, hi Quinn, I'm Guillermo from France. Hey, thank, you're welcome, I'm happy to do it. Um, Oded says, do you have clear white highlights? Um, do you mean on the print or obviously, um, you can see the rim of the bottle there um, is quite uh, bright. I mean, this is not fixed or anything. So let's see how close I can get it. So yes, I have very clear white highlights for sure. That, I mean, the rim of the bottle right there, uh, there, is pure paper. That's pure paper. So the thing about it is, guys, is when you're doing this stuff, there's a lot of these little tips and tricks that you need to know as you're going through this because it can be very deceiving. You can, you can feel like you've screwed something up that you usually um, overprinted and you're really underprinting. Um, so there's a lot of steps um, that you need to be aware of. And really, the, the best thing to do is practice and experiment. Um, I just showed you how to make um, emulsion. Uh, we just used that very emulsion that we made to make this print from actually quite a thin negative. I mean, it's really a bright ambrotype. I mean, a little over that, of course. It's, it's, you know, it wouldn't qualify. Do I have something black? Let me grab something black here. I want to show you this. It wouldn't really qualify as a good positive, but at the same time, here's something black. At the same time, it's not uh, a straight up, you, you're not printing an albumin print from this image. Uh, uh, let me put it that way. So that's what we just printed. That's the, the quote negative of it, right? So not a, not a super dense negative by any stretch of the imagination. Overexposed, yes. But to produce something like that, pretty good pretty good I mean that shows you the ver versatility of not only uh, the negative but also a lot of credit goes to the collodio chloride process um, is there ever a need for a salt rinse when washing uh, no I, I, unless um, maybe depending on the paper uh, Look, you're basically, that's another beautiful, that's a great question, Peter, because basically what you're dealing with here is a plastic, right? Your plastic paper. So you don't get that penetration like you do in a thick, like an arches or a, some thick fine art paper that's going to suck all that stuff in that you really need help pulling that, that, that silver out so you don't yellow or fade or blacken or whatever you, whatever happens to be the problem with those. So for this process, absolutely not. The, the critical point is what you just saw me do. Wash that until you don't have that excess silver floating off of the paper. And then go through, you can tone it and then fix it or fix it and then tone it, whatever, whatever you prefer. Um, I kind of prefer to tone it and then fix it um, most of the time. 
but it depends on the negative too. It depends on what I'm after. It depends on the color I'm after. It depends on a lot of things. So there, there are some rules and guidelines, but they're not so strict that you can't break them. But, but really what you're talking a salt rinse is for, is for that silver chloride, to bind, that silver to bind with, a, with something, a salt, uh, and, and wash away. That's what you're really trying to, what you're saying is something to bind and pull away. Here, we're working with uh, basically a plastic paper. So, so yeah, um, that's, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to leave that at that point because uh, uh, I don't really like the, uh, the stuff that washed off the back of it, but I'll, I'll, my, I may go ahead and fix it through and all that. But I wanted to show you primarily the steps. First step is to make your emulsion. The, the, the next step is to, and it's probably good to let it sit for a day. I mean, there's nothing wrong with this, but you, you, I mean, you can use it right away if you feel the need, but uh, make your emulsion, take your time doing that. Uh, get, get your paper, make sure you have a good negative. Um, and you can start with some bright ambro types. Um, the, the, you'll be amazed what collodio chloride will do with them. It, sometimes it's just, it's really amazing. That's a great question, Oded. That bottle that I just made will last, in, in my dark room, will last four or five months, something like that. Definitely three to four months, and maybe even up to six months. I mean, especially dark and cool. If it's in the winter time, it'll definitely go five, six months, yeah. Great storage shelf life, easy to pour onto the, emul the emulsion onto the paper, fast drying, quick results. I mean, let's be honest, that was uh, maybe a four minute printout on that. Two minutes in the, sun, in the UV and then two minutes on the Rionet, kind of a hybrid, right? Um, so yeah, you end up getting this uh, great process um, this great process that, that's very, very forgiving, a lot of latitude uh, with the emulsion, with the negatives, with everything. This is That's why this is one of my favorite ones, especially to teach people, because not only you make beautiful prints with it, and they're super archival. One of the reasons that collodion, that plastic, that nitrocellulose is so great is it doesn't take on all that, like I just talked about, all that, that other paper that absorbs all that stuff and then yellows and all that stuff over time. Um, you get that you get that latitude, so people get to start easy. The only difficult part is making that emulsion. Pat says, "How long will the paper keep after you make it?" That's a great question too. I've gone a day, a day and a half in cool dark. Um, uh, there's there's a uh, you know I I say the sooner the better. Pour it; it dries so quickly. There's just uh, in other words, can you make a bunch of sheets and keep them for a week? You know, I wouldn't do that. I'd make I'd make a, a half a dozen. I'd pour a half, make your emulsion, pour a half a dozen sheets, hang them up, and then print them out uh, over a day or two. And and you'll see, depending if you have safe uh, paper boxes, I recommend. I have a whole bunch of safe safe boxes in there that I actually put put in put this paper in if I'm not going to use it right away and I've noticed after about two days it'll really take on a um, kind of a, a an orange color uh, you know you're getting that natural um, printing out uh, basically a base fog on it it'll still print it'll still work great so don't if you, if you wait a while and I've heard people go three four five days with it too so I guess it really depends on your temperature humidity all your storage, all those kinds of things where you're, what you're doing with it. So um, I like to make it on the fly, hang it up, takes five minutes to dry and start throwing negatives on it. But, you know, there is that whole process of going through. Your wash time shouldn't be nearly as long on, on this paper. Um, again, uh, experiment with that Canson digital, that's digital inkjet paper, uh, uh, practice with that and see what you like and and I'm working on trying to get some better paper for this uh, that, that's uh, available for um, that will work um, uh, Hannah Mule has some and I'm, I'm trying to sort out uh, Paul just told me that I think it was this morning Paul told me that Hannah Mule does not make the photo silk burrito anymore I wonder if they make the fine art burrito because I've got some fine art burrito here that, and they don't have all that funky uh, 
anti-curling stuff that, that, that these things do. And the, uh, you know what? Next Saturday, let's, I want to continue this because I want to go through the whole step now that I made the emulsion. Next Saturday, let's take a piece of, of fine art burrito rag paper that I have, those 100 sheets that I told you that I, that I bought, and let's compare what you see today with what you see next week, and we'll go through the entire process. Um, the second reason is, is I've ran out of gold tone, and I got my gold tone coming Wednesday, so I'll be able to tone these things. Wait until you see a fixed, toned collodio chloride print. They are, they'll blow your mind. They are absolutely phenomenal. So um, let's try next Saturday, I'll, I'll put it down, that we're going to continue pot printing collodial chloride, but I'm going to go ahead and go through the entire printing process with toning, fixing, and the final print and, and let you see that because it, it'll blow your mind. Uh, we, can, we can do the same negative too, just, just for comparisons. Oh, I noticed that that, that mark right there is that... Uh, that negative's chipped up there in the corner. It's got a it's got a chip that's reflecting. Maybe you can see it from this side. That kind of broken, cracked piece right there. Those are weird. You got to watch those because they will put highlights in your prints like that, refracting that light. Oh, Dad says, have you tried sizing paper yourself with gelatin? Maybe. Um, I, I'm, I, I was surprised that I didn't get this question earlier because um, I'm always looking for a workaround for all these issues. Let's talk about why do you need to use this particular paper? What is burrito paper? Burrito paper is a paper that has a layer of barium, a rock, if you will. Let's just call it rock. A layer of rock, really hard stuff, in it. That when you pour ether and collodion, it's got a ton of ether in it and alcohol on it, solvents. You don't just melt right through. You just don't go transparent. Pour some collodion on a regular piece of fine art paper, whatever. It'll just bleed right through. That barium holds that. Gelatin is not strong enough. You need burrito paper in order to make this process work. Um, now, if you come up with another solution, man, I'm all ears. Uh, but But right now... Um, burrito paper is, is, is the bomb. Burrito paper is the paper you want to use for this because of the solvents and that layer that protects the paper. So you have that layer and then you have the white on top that will take on that layer of emulsion, which is collodion, right? Collodion, the salt, and then the silver nitrate embedded into it, right? Put into it. You expose it to light, wash away the free silver, fix it, Tone it, tone it, fix it, dry it, mount it, that kind of thing. Maybe do carbon prints for a future episode. Man, I'd love to do carbon prints for a future episode, but it's so, I don't have the, I can't take you everywhere. You just saw what a mess that was trying to trying to get you in the dark room. I can do the simple stuff um, uh, on, you know, on these shows, and I can talk about how to do carbon prints and what to look for, and I can make carbon prints and show them to you or talk about negatives, what good, prints are, talk about solutions of dichromate and acetone for the negatives and the tissues you're trying to print, print on. But uh, I'll, I'll consider that. I'll, I'll, I'll see if I can put something together on carbon printing. Um, I recommend starting with oil printing, but uh, carbon printing, we can make tissues and all that. I got a whole, whole thing over there we can do all that with. Next week, though, I want to continue with this pot printing. This is accessible to everyone. And it's uh, great results because a lot of your negatives aren't going to be good enough for um, albumin or salt. Uh, carbon and oil, you, you, you have a lot of latitude there as well, too. I'd say carbon, oil, and collodio chloride um, are pretty much, and gelatin chloride for the most part, are pretty much in the same family for what kind of negatives they need. Um, you can read in my book in Chapter 11, Making negatives for a particular type of print and and the theory behind that and why why we talk about it that way. Um, so I'm going to leave you. It is 11:30. I've got to actually. Um, I got some some stuff I need to do today. Um, building that house, building our house on the mountain. We're making progress. I'm getting these uh, our architectural drawings done. Working on the on-site waste system. Um, 
boy, what a process. I, I was telling my wife the other day that uh, I understand why people uh, don't do this. It's, it's not only terribly expensive, but just the things you have to do that you're, you're just really not aware of, trying to go off the grid, trying to build a place in the mountains, trying to get people to cooperate with you doing it. It's, it's, a, it's a challenge, but hey, I'm up for a challenge. Sasha, you are very welcome. Um, thank you. Thank you for buying my book. Yes, you're welcome for all of that. Thank you for anytime you buy a book. And what I mean by buy a book, I got to pitch this again because thank you for mentioning that. Anytime you buy a book, you're, you're helping me not only do this, but you're, you're, you're actually giving me time to do this because it's less time that I have to spend doing something else to earn money to get out of here and to get up there on the mountain. So every penny of these books basically are going to that homestead build. And why is that important to you? Because if you ever want to come up to the mountain, I'm going to have a Northlit studio, a nice dark room like this, um, all the gear you can imagine, and you can come up and spend a week in the mountains making prints, learning right there on the spot, experimenting. It's a big deal. So I, I connect the two. Anytime people support me financially or with a good word or, you know, just any of that helps me a lot. And in the end, it all ends up going to the mountains. So I appreciate that. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. You're, you're very, very kind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, Dad said thanks for the very uh, much for the brave life experience. It it was. I, I I wanted to put that caveat there because you know we never know. We we can say nine times out of ten we're okay, and then this time we make emulsion and it's full of air bubbles or it doesn't work. You know that kind of thing. But we pulled it off. We did okay, guys. There's our there's our print that we made. Um, not fixed or anything. These are incredibly durable too. But next week. Let's continue on prop printing, and I'll have some fine art paper with gold tone. I use the Tetanol, the good German stuff, and gold tone, and we'll do a final print, and I'll show you what all of this rambling is about. You'll see it visually, and you'll love it. Well, thank you, Sasha. Oh, you know what? I use, uh, uh, I was just reading the comments here. I use Yuppo paper for tissue. Uh, for uh, carbon, um, and and that's an, that's interesting. Um, I'll try. I'll experiment with some Yepo paper. Um, I never thought about that, and I have a bunch of Yepo paper here. I'll, I'll try that, Georgie. Georgie, is that your? Is that how you say your name? I hope. You're very welcome, Paul. I encourage everyone that's interested in making negatives to start out with this printing out process. Uh, suffer through making the emulsion one time and make you a, a decent batch that 300 mils will you, you saw it. it'll it'll make many many prints once you have that made you can pour paper all day long dries fast very forgiving on the negatives so you can experiment on the density of your negatives you can see what you're getting it's a fast wonderful process and uh, or variant for printing out so experiment with that i will see you guys next week next saturday i'll be back Yes, I have a workshop on the 22nd. I got to make sure that I don't commit to, to something here. Um, but I'll be back ne oh, next Saturday where we're going to do safety. Um, I'll combine the two. I'll do safety and continue the printing out process. I'll, I, I've got a bunch of safety questions about handling and storing chemistry and usage and how I get my blood checked and how I, you know, I'm working with mercury and cadmium and all this stuff. I'll talk in depth. If you have questions about safety and storage with chemistry, send them in. But I'll I'll continue on with the pot making process too. Maybe more people will be in here for the for the safety. Thank you. I'll see you next week. Have a great rest of your weekend, afternoon, evening. Thank you very much, and we'll we'll catch you next week. Ciao.